Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another thing that we call a quick view. I almost feel like it's necessary to issue a disclaimer at the beginning of every quick view in which quick does not refer to the duration of the video. I have said many times in the past, I don't trust a seven minute review of anything because all that means is that the person took the item, tested it for an unknown amount of time off screen, uh, cherry picked footage, and then they talk over the top of it. You have no idea what that thing being tested actually does. You have their interpretation of what it's doing. So that's not what we do in a quick view. A quick view is, here's the bag. Proline Hyrax, uh, brought to you uh, through the contributions of the Osmium level supporters of the Canyon, uh, sent in these because I was, I was discussing this with said member and he said, what's a tire that you want to test? And I said, I think we've almost run through Proline and I still haven't tested Hyrax. Hyrax is kind of the OG Proline crawler tire. Is it not Hyrax in G8? And I think it's fitting. I think it is well inside the normal operating purview of the Canyon and that this tire came out in what, like 2017? Yeah, let's test it seven years later. I just saw a video pop up in my feed a couple days ago that said, it was like the top five things you should know before buying your Traxxas Slash. And I was like, Bleh? I looked down at the bottom to make sure that that video, it didn't say 10 Y next to it, but no, it said five days. So I guess things remain relevant. Uh, ad infinitum? I don't, I don't know. Uh, Proline Hyrax in, in G8. And I will be able to, after, after the conclusion of this, I will be able to figure out how to finish the phrase often imitated and, and often doesn't even cover it. Uh, I don't think that there is a tire design on the market that has been cloned, copied, ripped off, redone more times than, than the Proline Hyrax. I mean, the, the original, in my mind, Super Swamper Rocks tire of Ally Express and Amazon fame. Oh, no. I like to, I like to put the bead lock ring in first. This is a bubble juice tire. I, I recommend bubble juice for anything Proline. G8 or Predator. Uh, much as I recommend that for anything uh, Vanquish Red. Vanquish Red is bubble juice mandatory. Uh, so are Hot Bodies Pink. You can get away with mounting a G8 tire without the juice. It's not 100% mandatory, but it does make it a lot easier. Much like Susan makes everything easier. Back ring in first. Then we kind of plump the front ring up because we have such a sharp edge in the front. And then we're not going to have any problems popping beads. I didn't have any bead popping problems. If anything, the, they fit very, very tight, tight to the point where, and you, and you will see the, the bubble juice uh, come into excellent use right here because, oh, well, we oftentimes I don't get that lined up. So the the front holes and the back holes, they don't line up. And then you have to try to twist one of the rings inside the tire. And the compound says, uh, no brother, this, this is where I live now. These are, of course, fitted. You saw me insert. That is a Canyon Custom Medium Insert Tan, uh, Tim Tin Dual Stage Inner, a la Amazon. And then a Canyon Front is a Canyon Soft. Two wraps of reticulated polyethylene foam around the very same Tim Tin inner. If you didn't get as good of a look at it, that is a, a medium, a three inch, a medium hair bun wrapped around a dual stage inner. And you would think that's not going to work. And then should you uh, purchase the componentry to assemble it, you will put it together in the tire and you will do this and you'll go, that's not going to work. And for whatever reason, the original, the OG 
the double bun, because it's a dual stage bun. It's not two buns, it's a double bun. Uh, the double bun does indeed work, and it works on pretty much everything, and it is what we use to establish a pun intended and no pun intended baseline. It's the vehicle upon which virtually every tire is tested. Always dirty, never clean. Baseline, the Enduro SE. He runs all day, every day. The, the tire that he uses to test things that aren't tires are RTR compound 1.9 inch Canyon trails. And he runs Canyon mediums all the way around. So if you've seen course building episodes, if you've seen tests of speed controls or motors, those everything is tested on a RTR compound canyon trail with a double bun all the way around. It is how we establish the baseline with baseline. So no tire is given an advantage. The only tires that are exceptions to this are tires that are uh, different sizes, odd sizes. We do have a custom set for narrow boys like Proline Toyos, things like that. But when we get into, say, 2.2 LPs, they are not on a Canyon Custom. We have not formulated a Canyon Custom for a tire of that size. So oft times they just run on the included foam or whatever we have on hand. Anyway, on to the matter at hand. The Proline Hyrax, been around forever. We've never tested it. I am not ashamed to admit that prior to doing this, the very first set of tires I ever bought, aftermarket crawler tires for my TRX4, the first crawler that I bought, was a set of the Super Swamper Rocks tire from Amazon because they get you. They hook in and they get you. They'll give you a set of basically 105s that look just like this. I think mine were the gunmetal with the black ring and a set of tires, and it'll usually be about 50 bucks. So rims are usually about 35. So you're getting a set of tires for $15. And you think, man, that is a deal. And then you find out those tires are not remarkably great. I have yet to experience a knockoff, a fake Hyrax that is actually even worth the 15 bucks. Uh, most of them are here for a good time, not for a long time. If you just want to, if you want to do some shreddies, uh, they're, they're kind of good for that. These, these, these are the guy untested up until now. Soon to be tested in just a few moments. They'll run through the Canyon Tire Test Protocol 10 stations. We're going to test what I consider to be pretty much every aspect of the tire, including performance on the wet, which is what we do last. So come with me, would you? And we will test the Proline Hyrax because we haven't tested it before. Here's the deal. We're getting deep into it. And as I've mentioned, I think I've tested all the Proline tires at this point. I, I might have a couple that I've missed. As such, I have a number. I can't help. I can't stop. I can't. Uh, prejudgment is imp uh, uh, avoiding prejudgment is impossible. I have a number in my head uh, before I even turn on the transmitter, and it's not a self-fulfilling prophecy thing. I'm. I'm not trying to hit that number. The tests are academic. We see what it does and we evaluate accordingly. It is a numerical score, a judgment-based numerical score. I don't dislike tires. That's, that's weird. Uh, sometimes I don't like the aesthetic of a tire but performance is an, is an absolute. It can do the thing or it can't do the thing. And, uh, and, and I just, I'm watching. I'm watching everything that the tire does. Uh, when frequenters will know, we come right here and we go right here, and what do I want to see? I want to see no hesitation. And how many milliseconds of hesitation you are given uh, determines what the score is, and that, that's a nine point. You know, I, I we're gonna be contradictory 
today. I feel on several points. Uh, we're st we still, I want to give it a 9.5. I want to give it a 9.5. But then the, uh, another part of my brain is like, that's a 9.6. It had a little bit of hesitation, but it wasn't like we're no fallbacks or nothing. So we, we will always err to a tenth higher. So that is indeed a 9.6 at Slick Rock. And th this tire is going to give me, it's either going to give me problems or it isn't. I mean, you know, it's all 50 50 at this point. When we're talking about the, the, the top echelons, tires that are up above, say, 93 or 94. Let's say in 93 is the low end. Between 93 and 98, uh, it, it is microscopic hesitations that are the difference in the scores. Once you're up here, all the tires are very close. Particularly when we're talking about testing tires, a run of tires of all the same compound. I cannot help but compare a GA tire against every other GA tire. That's just, that's just a thing. Because what we're evaluating here is not the compound. We know the capabilities of the compound. We are evaluating the tread pattern. Is the tread pattern better than another tread pattern? I don't like to see fallbacks. He can erase it. The tire did what I wanted it to do. It went it, it, when I cut a line to the left and cut it back to the right. If I get purchase and I get mo and I'm rewarded with forward movement, that is what I want to see. This will be the teller right here for me. A little hesitation there, but none right there. Okay, so uh, again, I was hovering at a 95. No, we're gonna. We're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna go 96 again. Oh, I bound, bound that up pretty good. I want to see it. I want to see it up the middle one more time. I don't think it's gonna improve above that 96 here. Like right there. There was his opportunity. I can move it. There we are. There we are. Yeah. It's a 9.6. I'm, I'm trying to help you out here. I want to see better than the 9.6, which is, I know, as it comes out of my mouth, it feels crazy to say. The Hyrax has got a nice hard shoulder, and I think, that, I think that's going to help. And it, it is a stepped lug. There's like a multi-tier to the lug. Okay, that. That came and went. I, I did <laughs> I did not see that coming. We will allow it its first hit on. Maybe we're, maybe we're clearing the tires a little bit. Yeah, that's that's a lot better. A little light. Okay, it's transferring over a little bit. Ooh, I can. Oh, it's there. It's there. There's a there's a spot. That was overlooked. Okay. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a tango. It's a, it's a ballet of grip and slip. You need the rear to slip a little bit, but not too much, because that's gonna reposition in a way that you don't want it to. We don't want the shoulder to fold to, see right there? That's a strange crossway. That implies to me, I was, not, I was not involved in any of that process right there. That implies to me that we're getting a, so the shoulder, the shoulder is acting a little too stiff. And when it, so it doesn't really collapse. It, it just kind of flops. Wow, collapse and flop. Um, okay, so a collapse in my, in, in this, analogy is is a slow rollover the, the shoulder of the tire is rolling under so you're still getting that grip from the sidewall this the sidewall is maintaining too much integrity like i can get a lot of drive right there okay so we will just go for the high side and i think it will yeah that was a nice set down it acts really rigid on the corner 
As soon as I make that cutback, it's not as bad as some other tires. I'm, I'm, I'm digging through the data bank to see what, I, what I've tested recently that I think has more of a shoulder roll. Stay high, stay high. Yeah, there's nothing there. It has, it has pushed over. Okay, all right, okay. Stay in, stay, nope. I guess the, the Hyrax, due to the shape of the shoulder, is going to need a much softer insert to, to get that shoulder to, to behave a little more. But that's not gonna make the side hill score better. So, so what I have to view it is, is the, the, the upper nines exist in that side hill transition and its performance here in the middle is really quite good. This, th that's very good. So based on that, I'm gonna go, I, I didn't feel like this tire was gonna do it, no math. Um, so that was a 9.6 at the second. I'm gonna go with a 9.3 for that. Until you get to that transition, it feels really good. And I think if somebody had some kind of a 3D printed insert in there, it would probably get that little, the, the edge, the shoulder tread, it would probably get that shoulder lug to bite a little harder when you need it to. So, like I say, the insert might not be optimal, but it's the Swiss Army Knife insert. It works in everything on everything. And uh, we judge accordingly. I have a very specific expectation for the Hyrax. I want, I want to see it best that 9.6 on something. Ooh, you, oh, yeah. Okay, let's, let's treat that as a tread cleaner. That was really, really close. Just doesn't quite have it. So we go to the shuttle maneuver. We wanna get front tire over right there. And that will go right here. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Good positioning right there. You need to be able to pull over that. Had to bump it a little. Gets a little out of shape. The score is pinballing around between two numbers. I think it's position, I think it's overall position ability score is gonna be better on a different obstacle than right here. Yeah. Get over, get over. There it is. Yeah, descending is a little loosey goosey. I think, I think we're having, to, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna assume because of the shape of the lug, the kind of, it's, it's a stepped block. Uh, because of that step block shape, it gets a little erratic on descent. It's gonna cost him a tenth. 9.5. Again, making assumptions, I think the I think the position ability of this is gonna be pretty good. The shoulder misbehaves on the side hill, but I think it will do pretty well right here. Because we're using that side lug on the passenger front. Yeah, that's good. And we want to see how do we turn in here? Do we push out too far or do we or do we shuttle back? It was it was better than good, but lesser than great. It was very close. We hit the other side. Yeah, this 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 is this tire's strength. This is this is what this does well at. Yeah, that was really good. All right, let's see if we can do the tight wrap. Almost, ooh. Making that turn, that's, that's, that's almost rarefied air in there coming around. All right. Give it, this is a bit more of a practical application of the side hill. Cut back, cut down. Yeah, that felt, that's, 
might, it might be as well as the tire does today. That was, that whole little, that was, that was the guy. That is, that is the 9.7. You have broken out of the 9.6s, my friend. You're showing it at the Beast was not great. You're showing at Oblivion was as good as you've done. Daphne's third, there's a little bit of a position ability score there. Uh, it's not, it's not completely side lug biased. So it just makes me hope that that hard shoulder doesn't make him too whippy when we go for self right. There's also no real directionality to the lug. Yeah, super good, super good. You can, you can get into and out of trouble with this tire. That That is a positive. Uh, let's see house. Oh, you, you dog. Pull it back over, pull it back over. Nope, okay. Oh no. Yeah, they, they, I don't know if it's the, it can't be the compound. So uh, I rescind the, I rescind the, I don't know. It's gotta be the lug shape. Uh, it's gotta be that harder shoulder edge right there. We should not be folding the other way. See, he just wants to push back to what is called the soft side, hard side here, kind of Real slow, real slow, real slow, real slow. Yeah. I've said this analogy many times in the past and I'll do it again. Uh, the pattern, the line of, imagine traction as a line. Uh, and the width of that line determines how dumb you can get with your positioning and get away with it. There are tires out there that it is a sheet of plywood wide. You can do the dumbest of dumbs and not only stay in your line, pull yourself out of the bad line and back into your line. Then you have tires that are walking a plank. Then you have tires that are walking a balance beam. You have tires that are walking a tightrope. I would put the high racks between the plank and the balance beam. We need to an analogize something in between the widths of those two. Because it won't, it won't quite, we don't quite have the drive that we get out of say a swamper. Certainly not the same amount of drive out of a swamper. So lug shape is, I mean, it, it sounds foolish to state aloud. Lug shape is very important. Lug shape is very important. Gonna do a little bump. Very, very, very rowdy. Let's get more to the flattish in the section in the center. A little, little bit modest. It's it's oddly surgy. Uh, it almost feels like the bump comes on in two pieces. Need to get a little bit more this way. We'll try a little bit more oblique. We we want to see a swing. It should look like a golf swing around like that, but higher. I don't know if we've got the height in us. Yeah. Oh, we apparently baseline just wanted to transition into the next scoring portion, which is, yeah. The shoulder is hard and I assumed that it was gonna bite well. See that flip right there, that's that hard shoulder. Ooh, but that's good. So I, I, I hearken it back to, I think it was on the Turbo Duo, uh, if anyone remembers that gaming system. Uh, there was a boxing game uh, I'm making boxing motions with my hands behind the camera. And you develop your boxer, you, you could develop speed and you could develop strength. And as speed went up, strength went down. As in, and if strength went up, speed went down. So you'd work the speed bag and the heavy bag and you would move these sliders around. And I have a an imaginary group of sliders in my head called total available grip and that applies to these tires. And what happens is this tire is not super great at times when the shoulder needs to apply itself modestly. It's an all or nothing. So when we're doing this, it, it, if I had a little bit more reverse speed, I keep my reverse speed low on this rig for 50% reverse for a reason, because otherwise we're going to end up doing some hurricanes. Uh, when the shoulder has to be applied 
fully, there are tires that will get into that position in that in that really side hill position, and it is enormously difficult to get them to roll onto the side. This guy is willing to do it. Once you get to the tip point of the tire, boom, it's gone. This is Porsche 911 on a wet back road when you get to that certain point. The tip of a go fast car has a slip angle, a crawler has a tip angle. You get to that tip angle, boom, bam, and followed immediately by pow. It's there and then you are gone. So yeah, this is a this is a good this is a good self-right tire. Yeah, this is a really good self-right tire. That is a self-right score. Uh, I, I say we tend to, to trend high. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you for reminding me. Daphne's third, I hate to say it, is a 9.4. And that's that's being, giving the generous tenth. Self-writing is a 9.7, honestly. Uh, if you can just whip it straight back onto the wheels uh, at 50% throttle, that's that's a 9.8. This is as good as you get. But this thing will self-write itself in almost any situation, so it's a 9.7. Uh, in terms of bump, honestly, that's like a... It's like a 9.2. It's not very good. It is, and some tread patterns, they don't like to be bumped. This is a tread pattern that does not like to be bumped. Looking at these tires, as you walk behind the rig as it's driving, looking at the tires, they, they look to me to be about 50-50. It's about 50% lug and 50% not lug. That should help to a degree with cleaning out. Like they should not load up as much. Also with a dual height, a, a step lug, we, it should be really easy to clean enough out from in between the lugs to get that performance back. Because what we do here is we, this is a sort of tacky clayey mud here. And our goal here is to get them loaded up and then see what we can do on the poles. Oh, that was, that looked, that looked almost real. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I think I think the step lug is strong in some situations. This is one of them. Yeah, and in this, where we saw a sort of overall lack of stability descending on a really hard face at the beast. Uh, the descent here, like our dropping descents, where we come in like this. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. You can't you can't take that away. Yeah. These feel nice here. This is where they felt the nicest. The the Hyrax uh, did not strike me as a mixed condition tire, but this seems to be where it's doing the best and they are really not loading up very much, which is really good. Still gonna saw through it a little more. And when you drop it down slow, yeah, it's really quick to clean off the top of that lug. I don't like to throw in too much speculation, but I think based on prior experience with G8 compound tires, Proline tires in particular, I feel like these are gonna do pretty well on the proper transition where we take the dirt filled tire back to Slick Rock and then we wet Slick Rock down. I think the G8 compound has historically shown a drop of just between two and four tenths points between the dry score and the wet score. They do well in dry. I, I feel like I want these to trend more towards the two tenths drop. Pretty much every tire drops going from dry to wet. But I think these aren't gonna drop that much because when these are dirty and they're loaded pretty well, when these are loaded pretty well, they feel largely the same, at least here. I feel like universally, I'm correct in saying the two things most easily tangled are he headphone wires. You put the headphones, the earbuds, you put your earbuds in your pocket and it's a knot now. Um, uh, second to that in the universe are garden hoses. A garden hose will twist itself into a little kink knot no matter what you, you, you twist it one way, kink. You twist it the other way, kink. Uh, it will just kink itself over and over again. And if it's been sitting out overnight and gotten cold, forget it. Forget it. You will never, you will never undo that hose. 
You have to wait until the next hot, you might have to wait until spring. You have to wait until the next hot day. So they are definitely clearing. We are, we are painting with all the colors of the wind. I thought honestly we were gonna see a little bit more, but I guess it's deceptive in the other condition in that it doesn't look like they've picked up that much, but these have picked up quite a lot. And it, it really does, it carries it. And I thought for sure, I thought that step lug was gonna, was gonna cut through a bit more. But I, this is possibly, uh, I don't really track it as an official stat, but I think this might be the most material brought back by the lug. Will you stay in? Will you stay in? I think we're just now getting it clear enough. But I mean, look, look, at, look at that. That, and the tires look as full as they ever did. Oh no. The hubris of my two tenths estimate. Yeah, they are fully loaded still. And they're really only cleared out at the shoulder. So the shoulder here is doing the work. The center lugs are just sliding. So then we, uh, I quite literally only untangled this hose enough to get it to here. I, I can't, if I needed to get four feet further away, I wouldn't be able to do it. So let us hope that the water will actually clear these off a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I still see mud trickling. Oh, they really hold on to it. Get around, get around. Well, it's just, it's just not there. It's not there. Ah, uh, there's a little puddle right down here. Let's, let's, let's force them clean as I, I am, I am making mud down here, full on mud. I didn't realize they were picking up that much and not letting it go. That's, oh, yeah, the, uh, not, the 50-50 the isn't, no, no, if there were proper mud on these, it would be b -b 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 bad. Um, yeah, they do not like it. This, oh, man, they felt so good over there. Um, but not mixed surface, I guess. Mm -hmm or not exclusively from one to the other, because every time I drive through the puddle down at the bottom, I feel like I'm getting a little more bite. Uh, I'm gonna land in the middle. I'm going to land in the middle and do a three tenths. I really wanted that too. Okay, so surface transition, when we're talking mud and then you get back to the rock, it's poor. Ugh, I don't, don't, you okay. I'm making some scoring decisions that are higher than I ordinarily would. So where we end up is a tire that had a, a, a no score higher than a 9.7, uh, which is very good, and no score lower than a 9.2 uh, with a mental asterisk next to it. Because honestly, there were a couple moments where that, the, the, what is the teardrop score? Load it with mud, bring it to Slick Rock, see what it does. Not great. I, I had to adjust, that 9.2 is reflective of two situations. First is how well it did at Slick Rock, pro, uh, at Teardrop Proper on the dirt. Like it felt really in there. But then if you get those tires loaded up, they get pretty bad. Um, so, then it comes down some points. Uh, at wet, I desperately wanted it to do better than a 9.3, but 
maybe if they were completely clean and the rock was completely clean, maybe if everything was sprayed down, we could get another 10th out of it. But I don't feel like chasing that 10th because I think there's, there is legitimately probably between four and five tenths out there on the course that this tire got given. It landed on a 94.5. When I mounted them to the rig, I, ooh, beep, 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 boop. I saw a 96. I thought for sure, I was like, high racks, 96. I give it a 94.5, and part of me is like a 94 flat would probably be a more accurate score. It didn't really have anything other than the, the side hill. When we passed through the single green line gate, this thing felt proper, like it was at home. So I guess the Hyrax is a clean, dry rock tire. And in that situation, you would move the sliders and it would do significantly better. We're viewing tires in terms of overall performance and this tire is a 94.5, generously, genuinely probably closer to a 94, which nowadays, I don't know if that's in the top 10. Uh, there are certainly pro lines that will that will do you better, unless if you drive exclusively on dry rock, these might th th these may well be the best ones. You know, in terms of an overall global rounded score, I'm o I'm okay. I'm coming to grips with a 94.5, but would honestly feel more comfortable with a 94.0. Uh, but uh, the score is what the score is. It was overall, it was fairly consistent. Um, for me, not quite consistent enough. Uh, it's all, uh, what I would, I guess I would almost call a specialty tire. So I guess the problem that we experience in the Ally Express and Amazon world is they continually clone this tire. And this tire is a very specific genre of tire. If you're driving around on grippy sandstone, yeah, these are going to be great. But I think the a Amazon and AliExpress clones would be pretty good too. Because if you're talking high grip, managing high grip is easier than managing low grip. Again, we're just throwing down the obvious platitudes today. Um, so th there you have it. A 94.5 on the Proline Hyrax and G8. I had hoped for better. Uh, if it was between the Hyrax and the Trencher, I would say by the Trencher in G8 or Predator. Uh, you're, you're probably going to like the trencher more. It's more versatile. Uh, like its scores across the board go up a little bit. Know what I'm saying? Anywho, thanks so much for joining us here for another quick view in the here in the canyon. Thank you so much for watching all the way through to the end. Uh, it puts you in rarefied air. I hope to see you again very soon here again in the canyon or at the workbench, whatever it might be. In between now and then. I hope that you won and I'll do your very best. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time here from the canyon. Uh, baseline, we got to go uh, spray you with water so that we can shoot the thumbnail. He, I can't tell. Sometimes I feel like he looks forward to it. We'll see you next time, everybody.